this week on Library Beat. Karen and I offer a sneak peek of the library's second annual Hot Springs Cold Blood True Crime Festival. It would be a crime to miss it, so stay tuned. Hello, Greg. Hello, Karen. We have a pretty exciting uh, topic today. It's something near and dear to our hearts. It is going to be our second annual Hot Springs Cold Cold Blood Blood. True Crime Festival. We had the first one around this time last year. Yes. And it was uh, very successful. We had a great turnout, and we've had lots of people tell us how much they enjoyed it. So now it is time for round two. We're expecting crowds and crowds. It's going to be like a Who concert around here. It's going to be incredible. Uh, Maybe we should tell people the dates to start off. It is going to start, our first day is November 3rd. It's a Friday. And then we're going to have some programs that day. And then it's going to continue Saturday, November 4th. So two fun-filled crime days. So right after Halloween, we've got the 3rd and 4th. So please come down. Uh, do people need to register for these programs, or can they just come on down and show up? I think it's just up? come on down. It doesn't say anything about registration. Uh, you can look on our website. It should be on there on all the programs. We're going to go over the programs, Yes, we, but it they, should be on our website they are as well. On our, on our uh, online calendar, so people can find them on there. Uh, okay, so starting on Friday, November 3rd at 1 p.m., we have a program called Understanding Human Trafficking. What what do we need to know about that program? I need to know what to look for. I know they just had a big human trafficking meeting in Little Rock, I believe, that mm. the governor attended and, and such. Somebody was telling me what all that teachers have to look for. Mm. So it's I can't wait to attend it, um, especially if you have teenagers or you know a young adult. Yeah. You want to you want to listen to to Miss Cindy Hamilton. She's from, from the Human Trafficking yes. Task Force. So she should know what she's talking about. Yes. Yeah, it's one of those things that you probably don't think, oh, well, you know, that's not going to happen to anybody I know, or that's not going to affect me. That's something that only happens like in big cities, big cities. or something like that. But it could, it could happen, happen anywhere. And yeah. it's not necessarily someone coming up and just taking your child or someone you know off the street. Mm-hmm. It is um, accumulation of, of different things. I think teachers, one teacher told me they look for Maybe the child uh, doesn't have a lot of money, but they see like a a new watch or new Mm -hmm. shoes that are very expensive, stuff like that. Yeah, that's scary, scary stuff. But a a lot of these uh, topics are kind of scary. So, but also maybe a little bit lighthearted too, because the next one we're going to have is the Murder and Mimosa Mocktail Happy Hour. Yes, we're going to have mocktails. It's going to be fun. Danica Yates and Shannon Jones of Murder and Mimosas podcast will be here. So we're going to have some mocktails. And again, this we are going to be lighthearted, but this is about crime and stuff. So you may not want to bring your five or six-year-old in here to listen to some of this. It's right. going to be adult, adult talk right. these, about some hard subjects, the, delicate subjects. These programs are intended for an adult audience. Uh, the Murder and Mimosa uh, ladies came to True Crime yes. Fest last year. Yes. And now they're going to be our part special of it. guest. Yes. yes. So that's that's, that's going to be at five. That's going to be fun. That that should be neat. Do you know what mocktails we're going to serve? I don't. That's been kept from me. But mm-hmm. we're going to have some light appetizers and some mocktails. Yum. Okay. So that'll be a murder themed happy hour. So that's yes. that's pretty neat. Um, and so that's at five. And then at six, we have a an author named Nita Gould, yes. who wrote a book called Remembering, Remembering Ella. Ella. It's a and, brutal case. Yes, and this is a something that took place in the Ozarks. Many, many, many a years ago. A long time ago. I'm sure a lot of things happened in the Ozarks a long time ago. Yeah, this happened over a hundred years ago. This young lady was uh, murdered and dismembered in broad daylight in the Ozarks. We'll count on Nita Gould telling us more about it. Yes. I haven't read that yet. I haven't read that one either. But so, I, I, well, we have it here if you want to come in and check it we out. We do. We have a vast true crime yes. selection. And then, okay, so that's at 6 o'clock. We're going to meet yes. with Nita Gould. And then at 7 is one that we're both excited about because we both read this book recently. Yes. Uh, the author of the book Witness for the Lamb, mm. who is Molly May. Um, is going to tell us about a hijacking of a Greyhound bus that happened in 1983. 40 years ago. 
I remember this, and I thought I was making this up because I remember these two people on this bus, and no one else remembered it. But she wrote a book about it, and so now I think we all know the details of it. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear this because it was only 40 years ago, not too long ago. Exactly what made them hijack a bus and it's a, want to be killed. It's, it's a little crazy. It's crazy. And then they went to Hollywood and tried to be on a TV show. They wanted it's, to be on real people, people, but real people turned them down. Yeah, I wonder so why. So it would just all have turned out differently if real people had said, yeah, sure, we'll let, let you on our show. But it's too late to blame real people. Yeah. Uh, but I did not remember that story, and I had never, n- never heard of it. So it was pretty interesting. And in the book, they said they didn't run it too much on the news. Mm-hmm. I guess it was just so, back then, it was so... Well, because they actually had footage yes, of, of it the, the actually shots being fired. happening. Yeah. Yes, so they, one of the guys in the book said they didn't run it on TV a lot, but somehow I remember it. Yeah. So uh, that'll be super interesting. So, Wit- w- Witnesses for the Lamb mm-hmm. is the name of the book, and we do have it here at, at the library if people want to find I think out more about that. online as well. So Friday, we've got jam-packed from 1 to 7. We have four programs on Friday, so that's going to be a busy, busy, busy We We might be up day. past our bedtimes. Oh, yes, because 7 o'clock is kind of pushing it. But I can't wait to hear Molly May describe and tell me how she, or tell us how she got all this information. Right. I think uh, the book says she was a journalism professor. Ooh. So that's how she got into writing, probably, but we can ask her. Yeah, let's see if yeah. she has any more coming up. She, yep, she might. Uh, Okay, so that gets us through a crime-filled Friday. And then Saturday afternoon uh, at 3.30, we're having a return visit of the Hot Springs uh, Police Department. One of their detectives came and gave a presentation last year. And it was That was just one of the best things I had seen. He did such a good job. Yes. He uh, walked us through the Katie Lavender case. case. And Uh, answered some questions about some other cases. Right. But there are some things he can't right. answer because yeah. of... Like open open cases, he's not free to just answer any question. But there, And there was one other closed case that he talked about to just kind of describe how they do their work. And I don't remember... Oh, yeah, it was the, the, um, the one where the four people were shot and killed. Mm-hmm. Three or four people were yeah. shot and killed. And he did. He walked us through it. He had some crime photos. Again, this is an adult program. Right. Uh, but he did have some crime photos, and he walked us through. It was very interesting on what mm-hmm. all they have to do. And, it, it, you know, it's, I don't see how they look at those photos or look at those scenes or go into a scene like that. That kind of, you know, it's very disturbing yeah. to somebody that's not used to it. So, yes, the, please. Uh, the adults, Katie Lavender only. one was especially interesting because they have the DNA of the perpetrator, or at least they think they do. Yeah. And they, you know, now they can do all kinds of things with DNA, including genealogy. Mm-hmm. And they were able to find the perpetrators, like maybe third or fourth cousin. Yes. But, you know, you have cousins that far removed who don't even know who you yeah. are. So that didn't really do them much, much good. But since they do have this person's DNA, that he will probably be caught eventually. Yes. And I don't know how many times they can run DNA or, you know, put it in the whatever the data bank. The machine. The machine. Uh, but then they had the color of the car, they think, mm-hmm. was involved. That's an unfortunate case. So right maybe there. we should try to crack that case on this podcast. So if you're listening, and you have any information? You have this for, if you're not the killer, <laughs> if you're the killer, I'm not sure that we want you to call us. Call the police department. Yes. Um, okay. So that should be very interesting. We don't know which cases they're going to be talking about right. this time, but uh, last time it was great. Uh, so that's at three thirty on Saturday, and then at five thirty, we are also we're welcoming back another guest that we had last year. Catherine Townsend. She is. She's fabulous. A podcaster. She did three or four seasons of Helen Gone, all about Arkansas cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is on a podcast called Red Collar, which I listened to yesterday. It's different cases there, not all in Arkansas. But she gave a fabulous talk. She's actually a licensed private investigator, I yes. believe. And she is from Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Mountain View or you, Mountain Home? I get those one two of those, mixed up. Not Mountain Pine, but one of the other right. mountain cities. But she gave a great talk. I think one of her cases was actually solved between last year and this year, mm-hmm. or was being solved last year when she was here. Right. But she has some fabulous insight into some of these cold cases. Mm-hmm. Some I keep seeing when you look up cold case in Arkansas cold case, I think Melinda DeWitt, I think there's a DeWitt person mm-hmm. that's missing, and the young lady that fell off the porch and died. Oh, yes. 
Um, Janie. Yes, yes. So she gives great insight to those, and I hope she has some new. She said she was working on a new Helen Gone, I think. Uh, or maybe it was just the red collar. Possibly, yeah. She's on more than one. Yes, she's pod, fabulous. Podcast. So and very nice and friendly, and will answer any questions. Yes, uh, you and I have both listened to a podcast that, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have any of the yes. participants at this true crime festival. Well, we're going to try next year. Yeah, since the podcast has apparently been pretty successful yes. and uh, brought back. Uh, people to think about the Nona Dirksmeyer case. Yes, in Russellville. And the podcast just recently came out probably a month or six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So we weren't able to line up anyone from that podcast for our for this uh, festival. But hopefully next year. And if you haven't listened to apartment number 12. Right, apartment number 12. It's very interesting. It's a Dateline program. It's very interesting. Yeah. I, w- I would love for us to do a program uh, focused on local cold cases i do too it's difficult though because people a lot of times don't want to talk or if they do want to talk they're going to accuse someone and it just gets into a whole yes and that's of fish. facebook i've seen that where they've accused people of you know certain crimes around here and i hope to have some maybe newspaper printouts from mm-hmm. some of the cold cases around here yeah um, I looked it up on the sheriff's website. You know, there's there's several around here and several missing people around here mm-hmm. that if you go to, uh, I think, Never Forgotten or, or something like that about Arkansas, people that are missing, yeah. you know, there's some that go back to the 70s that have never been found. Well, Karen, I believe that we've given everybody a pretty good taste of what's going to happen at Hot Springs Cold Blood. So if you if you dare, if you are into creepy, true crime, m- murdery type things, then we got you covered on November 3rd and 4th. Yeah, only a couple of weekends away.